2017 Water and Sewer Advisory Committee meeting is called to order. First thing we have is the adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt? Motion to adopt. Second. 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 Okay, we have a second. All right. We need to approve the minutes from the December 8th meeting. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? Motion. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. You vote on something. You want to vote on whether to vote? You want to fight about the adoption? Of the <laughs> well, I mean, you should vote, don't you think? Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> trying to up our TV ratings, are we? <clears throat> okay. The advisory board and committee summit. And Molly Hansen's going to tell us about that. Excuse me for a moment. Do we need, need not to approve the uh, minutes from the last one in which we just had a cancellation? There are no okay. minutes because there was no meeting. I'm just checking. No. I'm just getting that on air that it was canceled. We didn't have a meeting in January? We did not have a quorum. We didn't have enough people. Flu hit bad. You were out and Carmen, you were out. Carmen was, was out. out. I was out. You were out. Yeah, yep. Yeah. We did not have enough. I didn't miss a meeting. Oh. <laughs> 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 no, he didn't miss one. I, 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 I told you. You'll still get a letter from the front office. Yeah, I'm still got Send him a letter years, anyway, okay? I can yeah. do that. All right. All right. The committee summit. Tell us about that. Good evening, Madam Chair of the Board. Um, on January 3rd, um, the advisory committees, all of the committees, um, had a summit with a joint summit with city council. Um, and at that uh, summit, they uh, mixed all of the boards up. And for those of you that were able to participate, we greatly appreciate it. Um, so we had about eight tables of various board members, and they basically had two assignments. The first assignment was to identify current actions in our community that demonstrate Jacksonville is a caring community. Um, and they gave a little bit of history of where that caring community um, identity came from. Um, it actually came back from in the 90s. Uh, and some things I didn't know, it was uh, actually born from a group of um, wives whose husbands were deployed and um, they had concerns, um, and those current concerns were shared by local business owners. And the, the vision in meeting with city leadership came up with this caring community. Um, so the, the boards got together and, and basically identified things that they saw that the city does well to demonstrate that we are a caring community. Um, and you have a list of those that we've provided to you. Um, the second assignment was to carry that into the future, what were things that we could identify um, as new actions to show that we were a, that we are a caring community? And um, the boards got together and, and put together a lot of ideas. Uh, sorry, the different tables put together a lot of ideas, and then those all went on a big wall. And of course, there were some duplicates. And um, with that, the, uh, if you'll turn to page, I guess to the back. Um, it gives you some of the um, categories and actions that the, the committees identified. Um, and then basically the third piece of that puzzle was to go back to your board or committee and talk about what your committee could do um, to take action on some of those things that were identified in assignment two. Um, and, and, you know, they were, we talked in terms of, uh, you know, this board is a water and sewer advisory board, so you deal a lot with infrastructure. Um, and some of these really probably don't apply, actually don't apply to what we do as a board. Um, but we still wanted to bring this back to you and open it up for discussion um, because there are things that we can do. You know, some things that we've talked about in the before are, better communication with some of our rate payers and, and education our rate payers, which could fall under some of these. So um, those are things that we wanted to bring back to you, um, kind of give you an update. You know, we have um, other committees include the Environmental Appearance Committee, ONZO Civic Affairs, Community Development. And if you look at this list, a lot of these fit in right with what some of those committees are working on. Um, 
So with that, if there's any further discussion, I'll be happy to, to carry that back. If you want to think about other ideas that we may could add to this list, um, we, you can do those and send those in and we can um, include those. What I did want to share is that um, there will be a joint council and committee dinner on April 25th. And um, there, uh, the plan right now is for um, future uh, further presentation and discussion on some of these items. So we may, in following April, we may actually have other things that we can discuss as well. Um, but I did want to bring this back to you um, and open it up for discussion and not just say that, you know, there are, while there are things that certainly don't apply to this committee, I did want to look for things that this committee could be involved in and, um, and things that we could use to identify to show that Jacksonville continues to be a caring community. So with that, I'll answer any questions or turn it back over to you. Did they assign people that are going to look for this further or are they going to work on it, their ideas, and then at the joint meeting they're going to present more things? Um, it, it's, I don't know that it's nailed down exactly <coughs> what they'll discuss at the joint meeting, um, but what, we, what they kind of talked about is there are some things that are being worked on currently, mm -hmm. and some of that takes updating and, and making sure that all the committees know what's currently been worked on. So that's one of the things that we discussed is – um, making sure that everybody's up to date on what, you know, the city is working on um, through, and not, I guess I should say not just the city, but nonprofits and others as well. Um, the way that it was left was that the board could take owner, you know, the, the individual boards or committees could take ownership of something, say, you know, we, we'd really like to focus on this. So there is opportunity there. Discuss the fiscal year 18 CIP new projects? Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, you remember when we last met that we went over projects that you had <coughs> seen before that were in prior CIPs, and we discussed the status of those projects, where they're currently proposed uh, to fall in, in within the, in the, the new five year CIP window. And um, when we went through that discussion, you may also recall that you had a couple of questions. And so before we start on the new projects, the projects that are new to the CIP you're seeing for the very first time, I wanted to answer those questions. The first question uh, that was asked was, we talked about the uh, large Parkwood or Western Regional uh, Pump Station Trunk Sewer and Force Main project. Uh, where we're going to build a large pump station that's going to pump through a second line over to our land treatment system. And the question was, when we turn that on, how much flow will be going to that station? And we went back and took a look, and uh, our, our estimate as to flow during <coughs> dry weather periods is about 900,000 gallons per day. That will, of course, go up during rainy periods because we, you know, we do have inflow and infiltration to our system. But generally, about 900,000 when we turn the station on. The second question that was asked was: We talked about a project that fell out, that was in the uh, CIP uh, a lot of years ago, then fell out and then was brought back in, and it was called the Ellis Outfall G2. And the Ellis Outfall G2 project was one where immediately upstream of the Ellis pump station, we're going to replace uh, some lines, so 21 inch and 15 inch lines, with larger lines because of uh, some upstream uh, surcharging of manholes that we have. And the question uh, concerning that one was does the discharge from the hospital flow through that line? And the answer to that question is no. 
believe it or not, the hospital's uh, discharge flows down Western Boulevard in the direction of Lejeune, takes a turn and makes its way through the neighborhoods, if you will, over towards Northeast Creek Park, <coughs> where it ends up in the Bryn Mawr pump station, and it is eventually works its way down Lejeune Boulevard back towards the Ellis pump station through a different line. So that's the answer to that question. It's uh, sort of an interesting routing of the flow. Yeah, what's that deal? Uh, just the way the system was planned years ago. It's, you know, it's older infrastructure. So. Is there any risk because of that? Uh, none more than any other. Uh, it's traveling through, it, it would travel through one extra lift station, the Ellis, or Ellis lift station. It's the Ellis, no, I'm, I'm sorry, the Bryn Mawr lift station. But the hospital then put a strain on the system, given the housing and the residentials that are in that area already. Upstream of that station, there are some, a few problem areas, yes. Um, there have been manhole surcharging. Uh, our model even says during really heavy rains that there is uh, some surcharging uh, confirming that. So, and we do have, you may also recall, there's another project in there called Ellis Outfall G1. And that project is to upsize a few of those lines to take care of that problem. So would it make sense at some future time to look at that and reroute the hospitals uh, when you're upgrading other things? Uh, I will say we've not looked at it, but it's certain something we certainly can. It all comes down to, you know, easement right-of-ways, um, of course, topography. Is it literally just the hospital, or is it everything in that area? That goes to that station? That takes that Yes, route. everything, you know, adjacent to Corbin pretty much heads in that direction, the mm. neighborhoods through okay. there. Yeah. It's most of everything between Western and Corbin on that lower end. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Yes. So those were the answers to those <coughs> questions. And so tonight, again, what we're going to do is talk about uh, projects, uh, water and sewer projects that are brand new to the CIP, the five-year window. And the first one is, and, and uh, unlike last time, I think your, uh, your um, handout follows the slide, so I don't have to call out page numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the first one is uh, biofilter upgrades. Um, what a biofilter does, in a nutshell, is it reduces odors from uh, the wet well of uh, uh, pump stations. We have these at our larger sewer pump stations. Um, and it's a biological process. These units have essentially what are in them are, is a compost-like material that's wetted, and the uh, off-gas from the wet well passes through these uh, units, and the bacteria that exist in the compost uh, feed on the uh, organics that are being emitted, uh, you know, in in the uh, air, and so. The ones that we're looking at upgrading or replacing are at Bryn Mawr and Ellis stations. They're some of our larger stations. Uh, the biofilters have been there for a number of years, and what we are finding is that they are outdated and the ability to get parts is uh, very difficult. And in the case of one of the stations, we're even wondering if it's adequately sized. We did some, up, uh, some uh, air conditioning uh, upgrades in uh, one of the stations uh, in the uh, actual equipment room, and while our consultant was there, they just did a cursory review and said they weren't sure that it was adequate uh, for the, uh, the wet well. And so what we intend to do is in starting in FY18, we're going to do some, some testing to try to quantify airflow, uh, organics, and things like that that will be passing through it, and from there make some decisions about the technology that we want to use. The technology has advanced uh, quite a bit since, uh, I'm told, since these were put in, and uh, once we've decided on that during uh, fiscal year 18, we intend to go into design to be ready to uh, do a replacement or upgrade in FY19. How old are they? Do you know? I'm going to put it in the... Uh... 
when this, well, I think the late 80s, early 80s. And they have a 25-year lifespan like the replacements you're looking at? Actually, they're going to be on their lifespan. Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes, sir, you most certainly can. Up there it says your equipment's at the end of your useful life. Now, to upgrade or replace, would you be better off to upgrade it cost-wise or because they're already at the end of their life, they, it would seem like it would be just to replace them rather than try to upgrade them in it? That's right. It, it would seem that that's that way. But, you know, who knows? We may be able to use some of the vessels or, or you know, some of the equipment. We just don't know yet until we yeah. really get into it. Okay. I didn't know what the cost would be between them. It would yeah. be better off to just replace them. And that's what we'll do is we'll sit down and we'll probably come up with several <coughs> alternatives, uh, look at, the, you know, the capital cost and, the, you know, the O&M cost. And then from there, make a decision what's the best route to go. That will be covered by that 38000 under planning mm -hmm. and preliminary design. Yes. Is that half a million construction a guess of replacement or overhaul? That's a guess of replacement. Replacement? Yes, okay. it is. We, we, we're actually been working with a consultant who uh, mm -hmm. has a lot of experience in this area, mm -hmm. and so they fed us some, some numbers to use for the CIP so that hopefully we won't be surprised down the line. Okay. Uh, the next one, you have seen a CIP project, I think, in the past, uh, the Blue Frog, where uh, we have installed uh, these innovative aeration units in one of our three uh, aeration trains, and we're conducting a pilot test to see how, you know, if it uh, lets us uh, reduce the sludge that accumulates in uh, that train while at the same time uh, allowing us not to use as much horsepower to do that and to aerate the lagoons. And we have just uh, come off of uh, a briefing with uh, the vendor for this who has been looking at the data, and we've been looking at the data. And right now, we are thinking that uh, it's, it's looking successful. We're not 100% there just yet, but we think that uh, in FY18 we might be able to say that that our pilot program is going along well enough that we would want to go ahead and purchase the Blue Frog units for the other two trains and completely replace our, the aerators that we have there right now. So what we've done is we've plugged in a, a, a project to purchase and install uh, those units in those uh, aeration trains, as well as to purchase something called a gold frog to put in our lagoon ahead of the effluent pumps. The gold frog is a device that um, helps clarify the um, effluent that will be spraying into the field. In other words, it helps strain out the solids. Um, our effluent is pretty good already, but uh, we feel like that with the gold frog, we can make it even better, help prevent, you know, uh, sprinkler clogs and, and things like that. Not that we have that many, but uh, we just think we'd end up with a better effluent. So that's also part of that. So it's in there. We still, though, have to do a little bit more evaluation before we say, yes, we're definitely going to do this in 18. This is, of course, the Lagoon Baffle Curtain. Uh, if you will look uh, in the, um, well, up in the uh, upper right-hand corner, the large lagoon, that's our south lagoon, <coughs> south storage lagoon. And what happens, I don't know if I can do, what happens is when the wind blows this way, water piles up right in here. And it piles up sometimes so much that you'll actually see driftwood or straw or whatever sitting on the top of the berm. And that's not really a good thing. <laughs> we are, do not want that to happen because if, you know, if it gets too high, it starts going over the edge. We've not had that happen yet, I don't think. There's been a little wave action on the top of the berm. It yes. hasn't overwashed. Hasn't overwashed. 
if it were to overwash, then you have to worry about erosion of your embankment and you know comp compromising the lagoon. So what we're proposing to do is to put in a baffle, and you'll see that that's right here. Put it in right here somewhere to basically, as the water you know starts piling up, this it's sort of like a harbor. You know, when you enter a harbor. You know, from the sound, and there's a, a lot of wave action, you enter behind the, the jetties, and it's a lot smoother. And that's what we're intending to do here, is to uh, knock that wall of water down before it gets to the edge so that we don't have water up near the top of our berm. <clears throat> and that project is, uh, you'll see there, it's <coughs> estimated 117000 and we are uh, right now uh, recommending that we go forward with this project in FY18. Do you not have that same problem, say, on the left-hand top corner where it's narrower? Well, no. Um, the wind blowing that way? Well, no, but because, look, this almost acts like a funnel. Yeah. And it narrow. It, it tends to, you got a whole lot of water back here, and then that water moves this way, and then it's it's forcing. I'm making lots of lines, but it's it's basically going into a funnel, and it's just piling up. And it's there's of more. The shape of the lagoon. Mm -hmm. Well, it's more open on this side, so it's when the wind's blowing across here, it's more open. Whereas if you look up here, it's wooded, so you get some sort of wind break, to where the same thing doesn't happen okay. into the bottom yeah, corner. Sense, yeah. It's just a, a large open area, so the wind just builds up and it funnels it all right to that corner. Another new uh, project, this would be at our uh, water treatment plant. It, um, at our water treatment plant, we have a number of uh, chemical storage tanks, some of which contain uh, acids, uh, bases, basic type of chemi chemicals, and they are on pedestals. And what we're finding is that we're having uh, <coughs> spills, uh, de minimis spills, small spills, but the spills are, you know, piling up over time as people are getting chemicals. And what those chemicals are doing is are they're eating away at, at the concrete. So we intend to uh, basically go in and try to remediate that problem. We've been looking at a number of kind of coatings, uh, different concrete mixtures, but we've not really landed on anything. Uh, we have estimated a cost based upon, uh, I think, one particular type coating material, but we have not decided that that's exactly what we're going to do. So. What we're going to do is in FY18 really dive into the details of this and decide what is our best option, our most uh, technically feasible and economically feasible uh, way of uh, preventing this or correcting this problem and preventing it from happening in the future. And to add to that, the, they're in containment pits. Yes. It's literally a concrete containment pit. So it's not like we're spilling on the ground or just on a concrete surface. It's just it's actually, eating away the concrete. That's right. right it's a concrete containment spilled. pit, so we need to do something to protect that containment pit. And if you'll remember it, though, I know that you've had several tours. It's actually a covered area that is open to the outside. Um, so we need to do something to protect that pit. There's no need for a preliminary planning or uh, design on this? But you haven't made up the decisions, so is that cost going to be in the engineering design? Yes, yes. It's, we're not doing a, a really, you know, formal report, extensive study. We're basically going to evaluate materials. Is it going to be in the area where it happens most, or are you going to coat the whole pit, or what? They're, they're kind of in individual yeah. stalls, right. if you will. Right. So it would be in the specific stalls that we're having problems. This in the area where you're getting the spills. I think spills. this is two or three stalls or something. Yeah. It's not all of the stalls. Yeah. Definitely around the elevated bases. I don't think we've gotten as far as to know whether we're going to try to coat the, the whole containment area or not. Okay. I have a question I'd like to bring up. Question, two of them. What is this uh, special sulfur concrete? What is it? I'll let you answer. No, that. I wish I, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I, it's, a, it's an additive, uh, sulfur-based additive to the concrete that w helps resist uh, 
acid. Um, I don't know the details of it, quite honestly. This was a, some something that one of my staff researched. The sulfur interacts with the acid and neutralizes it. Yeah. Okay, my second question, why wasn't this thought about when it was built? Because it would save $232,000 if it had been put in there. It couldn't have cost that much to, and you knew there was going to be, or somebody had to know that there might be some spillage or would. Well, I guess nobody thought there was going to be, <laughs> gonna be any spillage. Otherwise, it would have been there. But that's the $232,000 question. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Uh, it's just, you know, it was missed. And I mean, I mean it, yeah. and it has been ten years of usage too. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's has not. It been online ten years now? It, or between eight and ten, because two thousand. Well, I guess it was two thousand eight. We went online. I think. I have another question too that you got going too fast for me before. Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is on the uh, upgrades. You got down here about a gold. <clears throat> a gold frog base unit yes. which has got bigger pumps why did their engineers that that have the blue frog or that system oh, why didn't good. they think about this that, to put in a bigger did they not actually think that, that no, the blue ones would handle it and they didn't need the bigger ones or? so this is a, actually the gold frog suggestion came at my request um when we toured one of the georgia plants we um it was actually a much smaller spray irrigation. Uh -huh. And they used the blue frog to basically digest the sludge um, in the lagoons, which we're using in our aerated lagoons. Um, what I noticed is they had basically a holding pond, much like ours, but much smaller, that they sprayed their effluent into a hay field. And that was, so our cover crop is forested land mostly loblolly pines, um, their cover crop was hay. So what they, what they, I found interesting what they had is it looks just like a blue frog unit with this, um, with air tubes on it. And it feeds um, air through these tubes. And basically, <coughs> we, we went in the summer, what they had is an infestation of duckweed and anybody that is familiar with duckweed, it grows very rapidly and it is very hard to eradicate. Most of the times you have, most of the time you eradicate it manually. You mechanically take it out. But what they had done is put up this curtain right over their effluent pump and um, it essentially created this clean water right inside this barrier. So the duckweed didn't affect their pumps, it didn't affect their effluent. And they just lived with the duckweed because it was so expensive to get out. And he said that periodically they have, you know, from ducks migrating, they have infestations of duckweed. So um, if, you, <laughs> if you go back in time, one of the challenges we had, if you remember, we had problems with some of the forests dying off. Yep. Well, one of the things that they identified was high pH mm -hmm. coming from algae blooms in some of our holding ponds. So one of my questions was, you know, if could we apply the same technology and, you know, we, through, we've been able to minimize um, the effects of um, the algae blooms because one of the things the, the panel that we had out there evaluating was, well, you don't need to let your lagoons get below five feet. Well, that means that mm -hmm. we are always maintaining a level of five feet of water in our lagoons just to avoid those kind of problems. Which means that if we had great weather, we could never get down below five feet and prepare for upcoming winter or storms. Mm -hmm. So we, we essentially have a base storage capacity that starts at five feet and goes up. So part of my question was, could we apply the same thing that I saw at this plant in Georgia and potentially go below that, you know, essentially gain storage back. For like if we had a hurricane coming or something. That's right. Okay. Or even preparing for the winter, for wet weather in the winter. Um, if you go back historically, we would take our lagoons all the way down to where they could see the channel in the West Lagoon. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, turns out that wasn't great for our system, but it prepared us when, for 
upcoming weather. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where this gold frog, and what it is, it basically looks like the same unit, but it's got these um, aeration units included that actually feed, I'll, I'll liken them to a bubbler in a an aquarium. That's what it looks like. It, You're going to have it to just change sends bubbles. the blue frog unit? No, it's completely separate. This one unit would sit right in our West Lagoon where our pump station goes out. So the, You're going to have one. It, yes, it would only be like one or two units right there at our effluent. Okay. Um, it's actually, go back to that, it's actually right off the screen in this lower area. So this is where we're is talking the, about the blue frogs. Yeah, mm -hmm. This is the one we're currently doing right now that you've seen. Mm -hmm. The pump station sits right down here just off the slide. So that unit would go in right down here. Where is the pump station at? Just off the slide. Oh, okay. So as I understand it, this is an additional, not a substitute for one of the blue frogs. Correct. It would be additional. So you're, you're clarifying we, the water more and adding oxygen, or you think that's going to help the trees with the die-off? Well, what we what we're hoping is that it will. It, we haven't seen the problems we've had in the past because we haven't had the pH problems we've had in the past and the algae problems we've had in the past. So we're hoping that that's part of it. And we're hoping that this will give us or help us gain back co um, storage capacity that we've essentially lost. So, and there's, you know, there's no guarantee that this will in fact to do that. And like Greg said, the other thing that they have and that we saw when we went to Georgia is that um, we do have clogged no nozzles quite a bit. They're typically in the same areas, they're the lower ends. Um, of the system where the water, you know, as you imagine, you know, if you if you turn your water faucet off as you're irrigating your yard, your sprinkler kind of dies out in pressure until it relieves the pressure in the hose. The same thing happens in our system. Once we turn the uh, pump station off when we're done for the evening spraying, you still have residual pressure. And what happens is at the lower end, that's where things tend to congregate and eventually we end up with clogged nozzles over time and um, what the uh, person with the company has said and what was kind of confirmed in Georgia is that um, it, it helps clarify that water so you have less of them. Over time we'll still have them because that's naturally where things are going to settle out. Will um, the clarified water uh exceed the state requirement in other words will you impress the state with a better quality effluent that you're spraying i don't know if i can answer that or not i, I really don't know because i don't know if they what i will say is we out do of check the, the quality of the water that you're spraying we do and what we've seen right now we're testing all three of our um aeration trains separately mm -hmm. and what we found is that we're we are seeing um, a little bit better quality in, ref um, in reference to total suspended solids and BOD, which <coughs> I can't even remember what BOD stands for. Can you? Biochemical oxygen demand. There you go. Um, so in relation, there we are seeing better quality water. So if you expand that over the others, it's very likely that well, we could see better. But I don't know if the gold frog will polish that even further. Can you tell me if you can go below the five feet, how much more storage space you gain? Um, Any idea per foot or anything? What we've done is we have it over average, I want to say it's about 52 million gallons of storage per foot. Okay. Uh, but recognize that as you get higher up, the lagoon's wider, and as you get down, the lagoon's narrower, so that 52 million is an average. It's not... 52 million all the way up so it's your storage is less per foot as you get near the bottom because it's a narrower area but i can't i can't give you that's you know what it, what it is. is so you're getting quite a bit if you can even take it down another foot that's right i have another question Adam, Jeremy. the new lagoon that was just built are there any plans on putting in any blue frog or why it's fairly new before we get a lot of sludge no, we really aren't. Um, we really aren't seeing sludge in any of our lagoons, other than our aerated lagoons. That was actually one of the things we were concerned with in our west lagoon because that's where we pump from. We
which if you'll mark the West Lagoon, the West Lagoon is the bottom one that's partially cut off. That's the one that we pump from. Um, we were concerned that if we were to have sludge in our storage lagoons, that it would be in that one. Um, and Pete, I guess a little under a year ago, had a survey done of the aerated lagoons by Parker and Associates. And while they were there, they checked the West Lagoon and we really didn't find anything. So um, we're not really concerned with the South Lagoon either. Um, so hopefully that answers. So no, we're not looking at putting anything over there. Where is that new lagoon at up there again? It's that big one. That's the big one. Okay, yes. you got me so, turned around on this. Did we not come in there on that bus for that trip the other night? Did we not come down by where the blue frogs are at and down that? Yeah. Yeah, pull in. There you go. Go from Fire Tower. We came in Fire Tower, came in the site. So the big lagoon, the new lagoon was on your okay, left I coming in. Okay. Blue Frog was on your right coming in, and then the admin building is actually that little conglomerate right, of buildings okay, I'm, I'm that you see. You and we yes. drove right on that embankment. Yeah, yes, that's lagoons. right. Yeah, we drove out there. Okay, I see where we are. <laughs> it does from there, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, Let's see if we can get another question. This is also a new project. Uh, what this project uh, is, what you see there is uh, blue lines are water lines and that uh, tank is the commons tank over in Jacksonville Commons, of course. And when we were expanding our, the model of our water distribution system and calibrating it, we just decided to throw in a little connector between these two lines right here and here. And when we did that, what we found was that the water pressure in the commons and out towards Western Boulevard increased by around 6 PSI. Uh, we thought that was a pretty good benefit, pretty good bang for the buck. So we're proposing a project to make that connection. Uh, and what you see in your uh, book right now, I think, is that we were going to design and permit it in FY19 and construct it in FY20, but we've been having meetings internally, and given the, the cost of this project, which is just barely, quite honestly, below the threshold for a CIP project, uh, we're, I think we're almost 100% committed to moving this project up into FY18. So that is a, a change to what you have right there. Is there money in the budget for 18 for that? Yes. We've also plugged into the CIP, this new project, the well rehabilitation project, uh, where every two years we add in money. It's, in other words, we're putting in reoccurring money to begin working at our existing wells to re repair them. Uh, there are a number of needs at those wells, anywhere from, you know, the, the housing, the, the roofs, the, the, um, the uh, flooring, the, uh, some of the accessories associated with the pumps. And uh, we want to start uh, taking care of those wells and uh, bringing them back up to, uh, well, I won't say pristine condition, as close as we can get it. Uh, we believe there's a, a need for that. And so the first pot of that money we've scheduled to hit in FY20 with the uh, next pot to hit in FY22. And again, we've got 35 wells. You know, the oldest were constructed in the 1950s, so, you know, and they're still in operation, so as you imagine, they could use a, a little bit of work. You just That's, need more than the regular maintenance and repair budgets allow? Oh, yes. Is that yes. what's happening? Yes. The maintenance and repair budgets basically keep them going, you know, if components burn out, out, yes. Mm -hmm. But we need to go into some of those and, and completely rehab them. Um, and, you know, I don't foresee, especially, and obviously we would start with some of our 
Black Creek wells that date back into the 50s and 60s, um, where we haven't spent very large, you know, we really haven't spent a lot of money on those well sites other than routine O&M. Um, so, sorry, operation maintenance. But we've, uh, I don't foresee this continuing on into the future forever. You know, I think we've got somewhere around um, 10 or 12 of the Black Creek wells, um, one through eight and 11 through, I think I think 10 or 12 is right for Black Creek wells. Um, so we would start there. And our, of course our Castle Hain, our oldest Castle Hain wells date back to 2001 or something, 2000, 2001 is when they were constructed. And we really haven't had any problems with those. So the idea is to start with those Black Creek wells and move through those and then either reduce the pot or, or figure out if we need to time it differently or something like that. Wally. Yes, sir. Does the water and sewer fund, we have a reserve amount of money that's, okay. Is there a certain amount that we're required to keep a certain percentage? Um, there... <laughs> What? I'll answer that question with there is an expectation to keep a reserve in that. And um, the LGC, which is the local government commission, has some standards that they follow. Um, I don't know that there's a um, I don't know that there's a set number. I think what over time what city council and our finance department, you may have to help me with this, is somewhere in the um, it was an eight ten percent range or something I believe is where they've kind of established that baseline and I think that would be um, somewhere around um, nine or ten million dollars if I remember correctly and we're somewhere around 20 now okay my next question on this the city council has to approve these on this correct that is correct and I think Greg's going to talk about that well, in just I'm a few asking minutes. is, is, is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is not considerably a lot of money when you come to some of these other projects that are in the millions and it says up here you got uh, uh, let's see where was it at Sufi uh, significant repairs and improvements on several of these things it would seem like this two hundred and fifty thousand rather than waiting three years tonight to 2020 to do it that you would do it you know that that 250 would be better spent now to fix some of this than having to wait you know three years we do have some that we are currently working on <coughs> um we have I, mean, I don't remember the numbers i apologize it may be two and five or something like that but there are two that we currently have it's not that much money but we do have okay. two that are currently programmed that well, we are working, working on working on some of these that's correct so you're and not going to wait until 2020 and say okay now we're going to do this okay. that's right and and that's kind of where the idea came from because we were looking at it and we we're like you know we've got these two but we've also got these two and we yeah. start programming it out you know we we kind of this. we're trying to get onto a program where we're programming these and that's where this discussion came from I, and that's why it's further out I we had something when we talked about this before and that that came up the issue was also they can only do so much work in a year that's correct. so doing two each year was what they the staff said it was practical is, instead of trying to do five and getting it all done in seven years is this going to be an in-house thing or will it be it'll uh most likely we would have um depending Someone on our in-house capabilities we would probably have assistance from our in-house technical staff and then it would be done by a contractor, by a well contractor, because they they would have to be yeah. a well licensed contractor I'm sorry, to yeah. do the work. Why do you want to do it this way instead of just asking for an increase in the operation and maintenance budget? Because they are, you know. Is it actually so, rebuilding of the brick buildings and stuff? It, it's it is capital. It's is it, it is yes. It's physically rebuilding or rehabbing the building as well as the pumps and the equipment okay so, so it actually you falls as an equipment expectancy. exactly okay that's what i was asking and it comes down to funding okay you can capitalize it. yes exactly we can capitalize it <laughs> and it does not if we included it in our o m our operation maintenance budget mm -hmm. 
it would, we've talked about that, those bond covenants. Yes. It would apply against those bond covenants. Okay. And doing it as capital it does not. Okay, that's what I wanted to know why you didn't do it as part of that, but you're talking about the actual buildings and replacement and stuff, and you're going to get the lifespan out of it for it. Yes. Okay. All right. Greg, just a ministry of comment on page four and five. There was no budget impact. Uh, and knowing how important the LTS is, I was surprised that there wasn't some sort of comment about budget or other as there was for everything else. Right there. Yes. Typically, we have a statement or something in there. If again you get done, this would happen type of statement. Yes. So if that's just administrative, I'm sure it was back in the office there. You probably got a long 10 page. Or more. Yes, sir. Just, just on that. Just cut and paste the ones from the other. Thank you. We'll do that. So, I just want you to know we do read these. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> um, so those are the new projects. Proposed schedule. This slide was these slides were put together for our meeting in uh, January, um, but it, they still tend to hold. We are still continuing to uh, refine the CIP. We haven't quite got everything slotted in exactly where uh, they, it may end up. Uh, I think we're pretty close. The one that uh, I think, uh, well, I'm sure is changing from when we talked last was um, we have moved three projects that were slated for FY18 out a bit. One was the Decatur lift station where we were uh, planning to try to replace that lift station in favor of gravity sewer. Another, and we're moving that out to 2020, and I'll tell you why in just a second. The other one uh, project that we're moving is one called the Sanders School and Thompson Water and Sewer Project, which involved uh, replacing, rehabilitating about 3,000 feet each of uh, water and sewer at these locations. And the uh, other one we're moving, and we're moving that one to 2020. The other one that we're moving is uh, the one called FY18 Waterline. So we're going to do the FY18 stuff in FY19. And uh, that project uh, involved uh, replacing uh, smaller two-inch galvanized lines at various places across the city. The reason that we're moving those out is because we have already started getting well into the throes of the Henderson Water and Sewer Project. You may recall that's a project where we're re rehabilitating, replacing whatever's needed water and sewer along Henderson Drive before NCDOT comes through and does a resurfacing project. We've finished our assessment of that and have found that we need to, I guess I would say, replace more water line than we had thought we were going to have to replace. And so consequently, that project went up by about, a, uh, over what our estimate was, by about $500,000. And so we're moving these other projects out to basically account for that so we think that is probably uh, the last adjustment we're going to make we're still meeting with a management uh, concerning the CIP with the intent of uh, at least delivering the CIP to council uh, on February 21st and then doing a presentation uh, in March uh, of course, council will look at that. There may be adjustments made after that, and then the CIP is, of course, adopted when the budget's um, uh, when the budget's adopted. So, really, I think where our, our future adjustment is going to come as we continue to meet internally on, on uh, general fund projects, recreate parks and recreation projects, street projects, things like that. I don't think anything else really is going to happen with the water and sewer CIP and with that what uh, you're always interested in given where we've got things positioned right now does that mean a rate increase and the, the answer is no so uh, um, it's a little different this year we usually come to you and say uh, you know we've presented uh, the projects to you and we would uh, you know, entertain whether, you know, you're
your support for the projects. Uh, I think that still can be done uh, because I don't think anything's going to change uh, other than that which I just talked about, Henderson. But that, you know, that is up to you. I guess what Greg's saying is if you're, if you want to see additional information, we do have time for that. You don't have to, you know, while we'll welcome your support tonight, if you want to wait a meeting, we have time to wait a meeting this year. I, for one, would be more comfortable waiting in that we've seen between now and when you get ready to present it, things do happen and change. You'll push something out or something will get bigger, your estimates will get more refined. I would recommend that the committee wait until next meeting to get that when we know that this is a little more firmer. We can do that. We can put a list together of everything um, and send it out to you with your next packet. Um, if it's okay with you, we would prefer to do, um, since you have all of the project scopes and everything, instead of sending out another round of booklets, if it's okay with you, we'll send you a summary of everything that's either in a memo or a list format. Because we have the two that we got December and here. Yes. Do we need a motion for it? I don't believe so. Okay. We'll just wait for the next meeting. Can, for the purpose of the discussion, <coughs> what is the first day of FY18? July 1 of, of 2017. 2017. I just say that for the G10 audience who may not be as fiscal year conscious as we are. Think. So it's, it's FY18 starts 1 July 2017. That's correct. Six months from or less than six months. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Wally. You're welcome. Do we have any old business? Do we have any new business, Jim? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> you should have on your <clears throat> come in your pack here planning and permitting update. February. We have a meeting coming up Monday night, so I don't know what that's going to be. But anyway, we have downtown Merle. I guess Mural. that's how you pronounce it. Mural. 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 Program. That's going to be a painting on the side of the buildings and like that down there. And Henderson Drive, the formal, former Carmite Cinema 7 in the shopping center in the New Market Square up there has gotten a interior demolition permit and was informed that the trampoline park that they're going to be putting in there, that'll be something else for the children to be able to go to. Get hurt. We'll be at that, <laughs> moving forward with that location. Well, are you going to be down there, Wally? My kids will be. You know yes, sir. Be Wally. Yep. <laughs> okay, I got one other thing here. Uh, back in January, planning board got a Onslow Community Outreach Clinic or ministry it's got the, it turned in a site plan for the special use permit has it already come before council was it approved or I, I, yes. I, think, I figured it would be <clears throat> I've got here a copy of their what their soup kitchen and all like that if anybody cares to see what it, it will look like uh, on the homeless shelter, the soup kitchen, the Christmas chair, everything like that. If anybody wants to look at it, you can, it's right in here. You, you, can, you can see what uh, I didn't want to go. <laughs> that is one of the things, if you'll see, that's on this sheet that we had over here. In December, uh, where is it at? Expand the soup kitchen and women's shelter. So that's going to have on it the, the expanded soup kitchen. I think they're doing a good job down there now, serving the people that's, that's going in there. They're open for from uh, 11 to 12, and normally they have everybody that's that's come in. They've served, and it slows down about 10 minutes to 12 or so. But right to begin with, they usually have a line of 
probably 20, 25 people waiting to get plus, in at 11 o'clock. Plus. <laughs> plus. <laughs> I went this way. Well, you worked down there as, yeah. as a driver, didn't you? One I day. used to 14 years ago, but I'm, <laughs> I work now. I just sort of, you know, check in. But that's, that's one thing that's on here, yeah, and, and you can see where they're going to expand there as soon as they can get. I think they, they want to have to have some more money and all to do the inside on what they want. But it's uh, it's going to be a pretty good, from drawing, it'll be a pretty good thing. Uh, also, they've got 267 regular permits, okay. which is for additions, decks, building, you know, whatever, like that. And let me see, I've got another. Harvard Street. I don't know where it's at now, but. It's the front of the building. Did you take it? No, <laughs> don't blame this on me. <laughs> Maybe I don't have it. <laughs> No, I already had it about site plan and the other things, so okay. that's it. And we will have a Anwasa meeting Monday night. So I'll have something on that next next meeting. They have them every other month, so we didn't have any. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Any other new business? I would like to make a mention uh recently i was going through a permitting process as recent as the 7th of february and uh found out that part of the permitting process for uh renovation and construction is now you have to wait until they confirm sewer capacity uh -huh. which wasn't done before so even though i my property for example was already on sewer uh, in the city the permit was uh took a little bit longer because they have to confirm capacity, sewer capacity, which is a support of us here. So planning and permitting is looking after the water and sewer capacity in that regard. Okay. I have something I'd like to ask if you could look into for us. Sure. Um, I think it would be an overlay between this committee and like beautification and appearance. Anything that doesn't go in the sewer helps the city is the way I look at it. So I want to look at if we can bring more to the public eye, um, not just the grease disposal, but composting too. And that's something that may be more than one committee would look at. But um, it can make a huge amount of difference in what goes into the sewer and what goes into the trash also. Are you talking about the household? Household composting. I mean, but you're talking about the uh, in the streets, people dump it. Well, down people put their no, 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 lettuce I'm and tomatoes no, no. and yes. stuff in no, the garbage. No, I'm talking about like my, you, there's several ways that you can do it. You can do it with uh, sections. I have a barrel that's on a pivot that revolves, and we put almost everything organic in it. So I don't. I have hardly any trash. I have a lot of recycling, and you don't any put it down through garbage. If you're putting it in a compost bin, you're not putting it down right. the garbage disposal. And that's eggshells, coffee grounds, any vegetable peelings, anything organic. It, that goes along with our what not to flush right. program. And that's it why I'm wondering about, if that wouldn't help if we tried to do something with that. Because it's not hard to do. People act like it's a big deal, and it is not hard to do. Ironically, um, probably a week ago, I guess, one of the headlines on MSN.com, you know, it rolls headlines uh -huh. periodically. The top five things not to put down your garbage disposal was one of the main headlines. So <laughs> it's kind of excited to see that. I'm sure most aren't, but oh, yeah. I was. No. But that does fit along with our What Not to Flush program. Right. And that's what I'm wondering because I don't know if it would go with recycling or beautification or whatever, but it's. And they do a lot better in a lot of other cities where uh, even the city itself will recycle and stuff like that. There's a ton of stuff that you can compost. You can compost newspaper. Just for your information, the Cooperative Tomorrow. Extension out on what? Highway 24, Richmond Highway, does got classes a, I've got on a lot of worms. Okay. And we'll look into it. <clears throat> They're free. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said, Tom. I said that for Wally's information, 
out on Highway 24, the Richlands Highway, mm -hmm. the Cooperative Extension does free classes on mm -hmm. composting, and uh, they run them as often as they feel a need, but if you ask, they run them more often. And I'm it sure. is not, it's not hard. This isn't brain surgery. Yeah. I have another question. Too. Like you have to another question? Yes, another question. Fine. Okay, 730, yeah. Wally, uh, maybe two months ago, there was an article in the newspaper under letters to the editor. When will Henderson Drive be fixed? new pipes or whatever so that they can pave it and we can get rid of all the bumps and the uh, that's um Mystery. do you have the that is part <laughs> of the project that the greg mentioned the reason we're moving <laughs> things out is because of that project um how do you far have a do you have put new lines well, down the new whole new length new of it or a large portion of it we're starting uh pretty much um right around doris and going um, up to um, its intersection with um, Onslow Drive. And we're doing quite a lot of water line replacement. We're doing sewer, we're gonna be doing sewer point repairs. We're gonna be lining just about every manhole there is in that street because we find that they're all brick manhole, well, all but three are brick manholes and uh, most of the, a good percentage of the mortar is gone away out of those manholes, so we're going to line them. We're actually going to replace three manholes, uh, but fortunately, I believe those are in yards. Unfortunate for you know, the yards. Um, but uh, we, we've, we've done our preliminary planning, and now we're getting ready to start putting the design together. So, um, you talking about two years, years or um, Probably Real when it's all said and done, a couple years tops. How long will DOT wait for you? Uh, they, they're, they're not going to they, forever. Forever? <laughs> yeah. okay. They're waiting. They'll yeah. wait? Yeah, they're waiting. All right, so it's not like you have to have it done by such and such no, a time. No, and as a, matter of fact, well, uh, as a matter of fact, they've asked us to incorporate into our project lining a couple of their storm source. Mm. Oh, okay. So they'll reimburse. We'll do a, uh, an agreement with them, and they'll reimburse us for doing that. It's just that road, <coughs> especially right there at Doris and oh, yes. Henderson, has just gotten. Yeah. Well, also right down there, just past the shopping center, there across the bridge, there's some good sections. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mine, anyway. Could you find out either through other committees or other departments what we could do about that? Sure. Or is it possible that? The city would give the county time on G10 to inform people about composting? We'll look into it and we'll get back to you. Okay. But I have it written down as an RFI. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody have anything else? No. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn. Okay, do we have a <laughs> good. I'm good at that. Okay. Our meeting is adjourned then. Thank you, everybody.